Uh, Turn to Acts chapter 15 if you happen to have your Bibles. I'm going to have my uh, wife work with me and and it's going to kind of be a conversation as we uh, talk through some of this. Uh, Ministry is life. Life is ministry is the main title. But if I had to put a uh, a one word succinct title on today's topic, it would be potholes. And uh, everybody's experienced potholes. What do you know about potholes? Uh, If you are in the Houston area for very long, you have come face-to-face with potholes. And uh, we're going to see something that, when I read it, I was kind of confused. I wondered, the Bible shows us the best of the characters that it mentions in Scripture, and it also shows us the worst. And I'm that's a God-inspired book. If I were writing it, I might edit myself, and I might not have uh, included all the bad parts about uh, my life and ministry. But what is life? It is every uh, mountain and valley. It is every success and failure. It's everything in between. Uh, we say, oh, that's life, right? When something bad happens. Uh, when something good happens, we can say that as well. I want to show you um, some of the people that I respect most in the New Testament and how they went through what they went through in a that's life situation where they experienced a ministry pothole. And I'm going to read this whole section out loud, and I want us to to do this together. So turn to Acts chapter 15. Look at verse 34, if you would. Acts chapter 15, look at verse 34. Notwithstanding it, pleased Silas to abide there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city which we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Seems like the work of an itinerant evangelist right there. And... Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought it not good to take him with them, who departed from them, from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus, And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went throughout Syria and Sicilia, confirming the churches. Uh, Today in our text, the unthinkable happens. Uh, Verse 38 says, But Paul thought it not good to take with him John Mark with them, who departed thence from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work, and the contention was so sharp. Circle it, highlight it, underline it. It was not just sharp, it was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. We say this is a sharp contention. And what is this? This is a personal battle. This is two overwhelming opinions that come in conflict. And the Bible actually doesn't tell us who was right and who was wrong here. I think this is very interesting. It was a division among the greatest missionary team ever assembled. The Apostle Paul and the encourager, Barnabas, who was literally the disciple maker of the Apostle Paul. They just finished the greatest missionary campaign in all of history, the first missionary journey of Paul. And back in chapter 13, uh, Barnabas was especially separated of the Holy Spirit. Paul was especially separated of the Holy Spirit. And they took the gospel to the darkest part of the world. This was a hostile people. Uh, the, The circumstances of their gospel outreach were unimaginable. Almost 100% unreached territory. Oh, we don't need another missionary to Mexico. Oh, don't we have missionaries to there uh, already? Hold on. There's not a bad place to go. But I think of the 1040 window. That is an area of our world that is oppositional to the gospel. Oppositional to the people associated with Jesus Christ. 
100% unreached people that they were going to. And the result of that missionary journey was nothing less than glorious. You can read the account all the way through chapter 13, all the way up to uh, chapter 15. And it's fairly given in chapter 15, verse 12. Um, This was really the summation of everything that they'd experienced over these last couple of chapters. Here it is. Look at verse 12. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. What did God do? Miracles. Wonders among the Gentiles, not just among the Jews. And with that, what did they do? They established new churches. They did exactly what the New Testament church is supposed to do reproduce themselves. Where? In Cyprus, in Pathos, in Pergamos, in Iconium, in Lystra, and in Pamphylia. This was a miracle trip where miracles were happening by a miracle God. Now, with all trips, now we travel full-time on the road. With all trips, there are twists and turns and ups and downs and sights and sounds along the way. If this was a war and these two were leading the charge, we'd give both of them the Medal of Honor for what they've endured. And imagine the bond. Uh, There is such a thing. There's a bond that only comes when you hazard your lives together. Uh, Brothers in arms if you will. There was a bond, a foxhole brotherhood that they would have experienced together. They experienced every spiritual success that you'd ever hope for. They experienced the downs of ministry as well. And in light of our text, it brings us to the sharp ministry contention. And it really, I don't know how they're not able to work this out with everything that they've already been through. What's this severe breakup all about? Um, Look at verse 39 of our text of chapter 15. Do you see they departed asunder? There's another time, there's only one other time that that word departed asunder is used, and it's used in the context of divorce. In Mark chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus says this, What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. So what did this sharp contention feel like? It felt like a separating of chief friends. It felt like a divorce. And they parted asunder, one from the other. That's a divinely inspired ministry detail that described their reality and is instructive for us. I don't know of a more sharp, more sustained feeling of pain, even beyond physical pain, than a separation between friends. It hurts. Uh, Any of you who have experienced the divorce of a parent, it it feels like that. It hurts. It's life-changing. It stays with you. And that ministry detail is included by God the Father for us today. Uh, Given the journey and the road trip that they were on and the metaphor of the road, we're going to call what They went through a pothole. Does anybody like potholes? No, nobody does. And this was not just any pothole. This was not a Houston pothole. This was a Louisiana style pothole. As soon as you get on I-10, heading into Louisiana, you know what I'm talking about. This was a pothole on the will of God that had taken the entire journey and put it at risk, leading to bitterness bitterness and um, discouragement and dismay. And that contention was so sharp. Satan would have loved to excuse this uh, ministry detail, but it's for our fruit today. I noticed this. Uh, Paul didn't quit. Barnabas didn't throw in the towel. And incidentally, The one who this contention was about, he didn't quit either. John Mark didn't quit. The Bible college student, John Mark, didn't quit. Not only did the journey continue, but the journey increased. Souls were saved. God was glorified. More churches were established. 
Epistles were written. John Mark became fruitful. Paul and Silas became ministry legends themselves. And Barnabas proved who he was. Not just a glass half full optimist that stood up for Paul when nobody else wanted to stand up with him. That stood up for John Mark when Paul wouldn't stand up for him. But he was an encourager the whole time. And there was a pothole along the way. And yes, it was very unpleasant, as they always are. But what happened after the pothole defines what a disciple of Jesus Christ is. What is ministry? A follower of the Lord Jesus Christ is as he does. A follower. I know God has a message for every believer in this room. And he also has a message for every minister in this room. And that's what God has called us. What is an evangelist? Somebody who takes the gospel outside of their context and goes with the gospel. And all of us should do the work of an evangelist. Whether you have a motor home and have weeks of revival meetings or not, uh, we should all go with the gospel. And when you go, sometimes there are potholes. Do you mind if we pray for these next few minutes? Lord, help us to hear from your word. Lord, help us to see this example of a contention. And Lord, help it to be profitable for us. May your Holy Spirit guide us into the truth of this passage. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Okay. Um, We are experiencing the end of summertime in Houston. But what has already been the reality of anywhere up north, the Midwest is already starting to cool down. Uh, They might have gotten their hoodies out, their sweaters. They are gearing up for what I'm sure will be a very cold uh, winter. Northern Nevada. These are places we've traveled. Wyoming, Illinois, Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio. A pothole is formed when there's a hard freeze, a warming, then another freeze, and then another warming. And that stress of that expanding, that that contracting rips open the road um, in our in our motor home if uh, we have any water in our lines and there's a sudden freeze well our water lines will burst uh, there's nothing to uh, warm them up and that's why we try to travel regionally and try to stay in this in the sub, in the spring and fall uh, climates and avoid any extreme it, it doesn't do well in extreme heat doesn't do well in extreme cold. Uh, motor home life is just the best way to go, go camping. Yeah. Um, when we drive on the road, there is a very strategic way to go over potholes, right? Uh, you want to see them. You want to pay attention. Potholes are an interesting challenge, and especially when you're in a, a 37-foot uh, motor home. It makes you feel like Mario Andretti when you avoid a pothole. It makes you feel like uh, you've been zapped with lightning on Super Mario if you hit the pothole. Yes, that's right. That's the appropriate sound. Dodging, weaving, negotiating, and straddling potholes. They're awful. And Paul and Barnabas on the missionary highway that was ordained by God hit a huge ministry pothole. Okay. We're going to say this word over and over again. You might as well get used to it. Potholes make you swerve. They make you sweat. And if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, they make you swear. Yeah, that's right. And it teaches us a a few valuable lessons. They are sharp, they're sudden, and they're strong. And number one, they are inevitable. If, If... life is ministry and ministry is our life, then you are, if you haven't run into a ministry pothole yet, you are going to. I'll never forget getting the most distressed phone call I'd ever gotten in October 19th of 2007. We were on the road and uh, we were in northern New York and my mother-in-law called and said, weeping and through tears I just tried to pick up the words that she was saying that my father-in-law had taken his own life and that we tried to just understand what was going on well we had to end our tour right there explain to 
the people we were traveling with, that we had to leave northern New York, cross the Ohio Turnpike, get to Indiana as quickly as possible to be there with my grieving mother-in-law. That changed her life. Uh, in the notes that we found, it was just a, a matter of money and stress and debt collectors and that had piled up over years and not feeling a way out. He did something about it. But it changed our life, changed our family. If we, looking back, I would have dropped everything to do whatever I could to have him here and not put him in that situation. He had that, cry. That's right. He, his pain was speaking louder than the solutions. And I don't know what family situation. You're going to have to do ministry in a family context. You're going to have to do ministry in a people context. You're going to have to do a ministry in finance context. You'll have to do ministry in a city context. In a political climate. And uh, look at verse 35, if you will. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. They, they were making a difference here right before that. And what, what were they called first at Antioch? They were called Christians. Uh, these five people that included uh, Philip the Evangelist and Paul and Barnabas that were one of the key figures in the starting of the church of Antioch, uh, they were making a dynamic ministry impact where the unbelieving world, world used a pejorative that they are little Christs and they took it as a compliment and they said uh, yeah we're Christians and they were Christians because of the way they behaved and the way they responded the way they, the way they loved the way they ministered and that was just before the sharp contention uh, when are they inevitable in times of ministry success in times of ministry sunshine if you will Imagine the spirit in Antioch. They're teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with some of the heaviest hitters in all of Scripture. What a place to be. Imagine uh, getting to minister like this week after week with some of the great impactful preachers that have made a difference even this week. The, the ones who've started churches, the, the ones who've had established ministries, the ones whose sermons stir us to greater faith. They're doing the work of an evangelist. And then verse 36 of chapter 15 says, and some days after, and some days um, after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Hey, what, what is the potential of what's in front of us? More smooth roads. Uh, there's going to be, uh, we can expect more of the same. Uh-oh, they hit a pothole, and that pothole was named John Mark. I, uh, nobody's named John Mark right here. Uh, that's not your middle name. Uh, John Mark the pothole. No. Uh, this is very interesting. They're inevitable because ministry is life, but ministry is people. And what was the contention over? A person. A dude named John Mark, a human being. With, as with all human beings, he has the potential to bring heartache and trouble. Did you know that it's risky to trust other people? Uh, in your marriage, it's risky. Uh, you know a lot about your spouse, and your spouse knows a lot about you. That's called a superpower. Use your powers for good. Anytime you deal with people to know a lot about people, you're going to see them at their best. And you're going to, I think that's what social media has shown us. Oh, I didn't know they thought that. I, well, what's in there has now come out. Now we, now we know. And it brings heartache and trouble. That's what happens any time you deal with people. Even good and godly people? Oh, yes. You can expect potholes. And this is what happened with the two men of the moment. Multiple times the Bible says that both of these men were filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit. They were the sent ones, the apostles. Barnabas was given the surname, the encourager. Uh, his name wasn't Barnabas. It was another name, but Barnabas means this nickname. 
There's a lot of nicknames in Scripture. Uh, Thomas called Didymus, uh, not doubting Thomas. That came after. The Bible calls him Didymus, uh, ditto, twin. Maybe he looked like the Savior. Maybe that's why he needed the details. Maybe he needed the proof because people were looking at him and associating him with Jesus. But this nickname was Barnabas, the encourager. And Paul, the theologian, he gave his list of uh, ministry experience in education. These two men were as close as, as inseparable as any two spirit-filled men possibly could be. Equals, peers, if you will, at this point. Uh, there wasn't even a power dynamic where like a pastor and a staff. These were, these were equals. Reminds me of Psalm 55. We took counsel together. It was a man, mine equal, that caused me so much pain. And it was Paul, separated along with Barnabas of the Holy Spirit's leading, to go on this first missionary journey that included the Church of Antioch. There was a partnership made in heaven. Look at verse 25 of our text. Um, and it seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord. Oh, we knew it was heaven-like. They're in one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. And they were beloved. They traveled together. They won souls together, established churches together, and were persecuted together, sailed to new lands together. And after this very important meeting with all the apostles in Jerusalem, they were about to go back to the churches and minister to those converts together. And what could be better? Uh, when you answer the call to ministry, you hope to be doing these things. If the tabloids of the day would have gotten hold of this contention, this would have been a headline. Missionary madness! The breakup of Paul and Barnabas, and it would have put those pictures on the front page, and it would have had that ripped page look, that graphic design. You know what I'm talking about, that doctored up ripped paper line, and angry faces staring at each other. This was the talk of the town. Hey, we, we know what happens when somebody notable has a notable contention or a fall from grace. It becomes a little lunchtime fodder. Oh, can, can you believe that happened? I can't believe uh, that these people, I, I remember when they, I guess that discounts everything that we knew about them before. <laughs> I don't think either, men, either one of these men planned for this. I don't think either one of these men wanted these circumstances, but here they are. Anointed godly men have bumps in the road. I think of, um, it was the year 2000, and by December of 2000, we'd already voted it was unanimous for Prestonwood Baptist Church on Schroeder Road here in Houston with its over 700 in this shotgun style auditorium bursting at the seams to move from one location to what was the old Champion Forest Baptist Church off of Champion Forest Drive in 1960. The location couldn't be greater. The neighborhood was uh, ready for ministry. Uh, Champion Forest had moved out, took a $17 million campus and sold it to Prestonwood Baptist Church for three million dollars three story parking garage three story teaching area 2600 seat auditorium it was absolutely amazing it was a, a nothing short of god ordained we moved in and within four months our associate pastor had led 19 homeschool families to on one sunday turn in their letter of resignation from the church and they moved over to another church in town. And all those families that had voted to get in this building and pay for whatever the next step would be and uh, move by faith that way, it seemed like there was a sharp rip, a sharp contention there. These were my friends, homeschool families of people that I grew up with and my friends. And I asked those deacons, looked right in their eyes and said, why are you leaving? And they said, we've got to do what we've got to do. And they left, and I never saw them again. So when I see pastor preaching with a limp, pastor Pope preaching with a limp, leading with a limp, I know that he's walked with the Lord, and he's walked through some sharp 
ministry contentions. Potholes are inevitable. What can potholes be? Well, they can be persecutions. You can expect it from the unsaved, even from those that know you and just don't like what they see. <laughs> they can be oppositions like that. Um, sometimes familiarity brings contempt, right? Oh, I, I know who you are. I just don't like you. All right, great. Thanks uh, for being a blessing. Accusations. What do you do when somebody accuses you? <coughs> do you get defensive? Sometimes. <laughs> do you make him a public example? Or do you, when he was reviled, said not a word. That's what our Jesus did, like a lamb over a shearer's is dumb. They can be burdens. Um, in Paul's list of suffering, he lists, he lists the care of all the churches. The care of one church is a burden because you're dealing with people, and people can be annoying. I want that to be on the recording. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, sickness. Um, sickness of the mind, sickness of the body, pain can have its own voice outside of your conscience and even not competing with the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life. Hurt people, hurt people. Uh, we see it in afflictions, afflictions of our own doing and these conflicts here. What are potholes? Potholes are inevitable. Number two, potholes are inconvenient. Look at verse 36. And after some days, Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Maybe they raised support for this next missionary journey. Maybe they put out the prayer letter and people were already excited about this next missionary journey. This is a well-oiled missionary machine, a force to be reckoned with. And chapters 13, 14, and most of 15, you could see the powerful impact. Verse 37 says he was determined to take John, whose surname was Mark. Determined. Uh, what is leadership but uh, initiative with a servant spirit? Somebody's got to take the lead. Somebody's got to cast the vision. Somebody's got to take the first step. A leader does that. Um, and even ministers of the word of God take the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, because somebody's got to do it. Uh, you're not given all authority. All authority is in Christ, but we're given oversight, responsibility, a stewardship of God's holy flock. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever determined to do something? You ever have plans? Did, did those plans ever change? <laughs> you have what we like to call right now goals, hopes, and dreams. Uh, I've had an ideal for the ideal number of children that I want. Rachel has had another number. <laughs> I've had ideals about where I'd be at this time. I'm 41 years old at this time in the ministry. Where would I be? What would I be doing? What accolades and achievements and accomplishments would I have already had this Sunday I'm being ordained? Uh, to desire the office of a bishop is a good thing. This is something that I've looked forward to for a long time, to keep on doing what I'm doing with that ordination as a credibility. Barnabas had plans. Paul had dreams and goals. And all of this is given to us not by accident. Look at verse 25. And it seemed good to us. Sometimes you go on faith. Sometimes you go, what seems good to you? And then uh, it says in verse 27, We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. Okay, that was another ministry team. You, at the same time, uh, as Paul and Barnabas were traveling, Judas and Silas were traveling. And I'm sure they were making big ministry at impact. We don't hear a lot about what they've done. We hear a little bit, but they came back and they had a good team. And then look at verse 32. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. So they had a impactful ministry as well. Two missionary groups, Judas and Silas, Paul and Barnabas, and another young man named John Mark. Uh-oh. This doesn't look like the Avengers anymore because uh, one guy who wanted to increase in ministry life got added to this staff and the, it upset the balance I, I'm, I'm seeing. Barnabas had an idea 
that would ultimately lead to a pothole for these men, including uh, not only did it mess up the Barnabas and Paul dynamic, but it also messed up the Judas and Silas dynamic. Uh, Verse 39 says it this way, and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed into Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Okay, what happened to our buddy Judas after this point? Is he not in the, plan, in the plans anymore? This isn't the Judas Iscariot. This was a very common name. Jude just means Jewish. He was Judas. He was with Silas. Plans have changed. Plans changed for Judas and Silas. And Silas is now going to Syria. And they've changed for Barnabas and Mark, who are now sailing off to Cyprus. That's inconvenience. This kind of put them on the side of the road, but not an unknown road. Who's in charge of this road? The Lord Jesus Christ. If you're dealing with life as ministry, ministry is life, and you've come and you've hit a pothole, this is a rim-cracking pothole. This is a shock-breaking pothole. This is pull you off on the side to make sure nothing else is broken. How's my frame on the vehicle (laughs) type pothole? It seems like It's jarring. It shakes you to your very core, and you wonder if you should safely go on or if you even could. This is the word of God. These are the men of God, and these are apostles appointed by the Lord. If you're on the side of the road, your life is not over. They're inconvenient. God has a plan for you, and a pothole is perfectly fine with the Lord. It's perfectly fine if you haven't found your ideal mate yet. It's perfectly fine if your church hasn't reached a certain number yet. It's perfectly fine if your uh, children's ministry doesn't have the vehicles or the ministry tools that other ministries have. Um, The ideal woman is Mrs. Potato Head, and I'll tell you why. She's tan. She's cute. She accessorizes. And if she looks at another dude, you can rearrange her face. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you haven't found that ideal one, there's still hope. Uh, here's the truth. A pothole hasn't ruined a thing. It, really, in the scheme of things, potholes are just an inconvenience. You might be slowed, but you're not stuck. You, I mean, you might be stopped, but God has a plan for you in the future. It's only inconvenience to you you might have taken a 90 degree turn but it might be the beginning of something now i'm talking like barnabas the glass half full this could be a a divine appointment an opportunity that god has ordained i thought i'd be financially secure right now not living paycheck to paycheck trying to eke by in the ministry i thought i'd have that promotion by now you you might think you're incapacitated in the will of god Truth is, you're just inconvenienced a little while. Uh, Acts chapter 16, next chapter over, verse 6. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Oh, well, really, God was changing their plans. They were taking a 90-degree turn. Instead of staying in Asia, they got the Macedonian call and went west. And I'm thankful for this little pothole because the gospel went west. And when the gospel went west, it went all the way out to the new lands and England. And, it, and the gospel spread across the known world and churches were planted. And then the gospel got all the way over to me through a pothole. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Ministry is life. Things change. You're inconvenienced for God's purposes. Um, Look at verse 7 of uh, chapter 16. After they were come to Mysia, they essayed not to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. Okay, they had plans, but the Spirit actually essayed means they were forbidden. They determined they were forbidden not to go there. Now, Paul, 
here's what I pick up of his personality all the way through his writings. He's a, this one thing I do. Anything else is a distraction. Hey, I, I'm, I, I don't need John Mark. I'm going to go on. Uh, that's probably the kind of personality he had to kind of do the job he did before he was saved kind of, with his, with his uh, personality. It's very interesting. Some lessons are learned the hard way. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. For I have learned whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Trouble, trial, success, Texas, whatever state you're in, be content. Uh, what happened to the dream team? They planned to go to Bithynia, but even though they were blessed and beloved and determined, plans changed and doors closed. Uh, you don't know which way to turn. Why did God put you in the ministry to begin with? For your purposes? Your plans? No. You're in it for God's plans to begin with. Do you feel struck out? Do you feel sidelined? God still wants to use you. God put you there. You're where God wants you to be now and in five years from now or until the Lord returns. Don't quit. Don't get bitter. Let's end with this. If you've hit a pothole or you stopped along the side of the road, life's not over. You're just inconvenienced. So let's look at number three, and we'll finish with this. Potholes are incidental. I love this. Potholes are incidental. What does incidental mean? Secondary. I like this secondary definition. Minor. Not a big deal. Um, Paul said, for our light affliction. He said, the literal translation is light bread. You know what he calls a pothole? He says, piece of cake. No problem. I can go through it. It's incidental. It's secondary. I'm not even focusing on the pothole anymore. I need to focus on what Jesus is doing. Look at uh, chapter 15, verse 39, please. Um, and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed. Uh, and then look at verse 40, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. God was still there everywhere present. You can follow him, hear him, listen to his word, and do his will anywhere. Here, when I'm being fed by the most dynamic preaching I could possibly ever hear, yes. In the backside of the desert where God has called you, you can do God's will there. Yes, amen. Pothole after pothole after pothole. Here's how Acts closes in Acts chapter 28, verse 31. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. You know what happened in the life of Paul? The work of God continued. He continued preaching. He continued doing a dynamic work. I, I knew a pastor that a scandal happened at his church of no fault of his own, just he failed to act during that time and he had to give up his ministry. I met him at another state, another conference. You know what he's still doing? Still preaching, still starting ministries, still training the next generation of preachers. Even if we hear something from people in this room or anybody that we've, that we've valued in the ministry, watch their next step. Watch what happens after their pothole to see what they were preaching was real. Watch their response, their reactions, their actions after the pothole. See if they keep on going. See if they keep following Christ. I value that. Potholes were incidental. They were hurt. Brother Johnson, you were on staff for 12 years at Worth Baptist Church. I just heard your preacher. He's one of the best expositors that there has ever been. And you, you worked with Dr. Willie Weaver, who hired both you, Tyler, you and Tyler Gillett at the same time. What a dream team. It was. It was great. I worked there 12 years. I worked with both pastors. Saw a wonderful pastoral transition. Why didn't you do what all the other staff members did? And work your whole entire career there. Retire and die. A church that's over 70 years old, that's just what you do. You don't have to come in and... Uh, revitalize the, the church culture, you just, the, the idea would be don't mess up. <laughs> what did you do? Why, why didn't you stay there? We looked at the calendar as a family and uh, 
and we'd go around after 12 years and we saw, what are you going to do next year? Well, what did we do last year? Uh-oh, the Lord wants to do something more. We looked outside of the doors of Worth Baptist Church and said, we need to be duplicating ourselves instead of at this one place, at lots of other places also. And when we took that step in December of 2019, the Lord threw open the doors even in the midst of a pandemic. Did you know that God was in charge of that too? I was able to minister when other people couldn't. Now, Brother Johnson, you know anything about setting up live streams? As a matter of fact, I do. Uh, Brother Johnson, our music team can't meet together. Can you help us with your music? Well, sure, no problem. Hey, I'm going to be out because I'm sick and I've just got COVID. Can you do a substitute teacher thing? Yep, I'll be right there. Lord, I, I don't know what I was expecting would happen. I, didn't know, I wasn't planning for all this. But you've given me ministry opportunity. Not just year after year, but day by day by day. I'm allowed to continue doing what I've always hoped to do, what I was called to do, preach the Word of God, simply by going on, going on, doing what the Lord wanted me to do. The Lord wants to do that same thing with you. What do we call life? It's ministry. Ministry is life. Ministry is people. And you're going to hit some potholes along the way. You're going to hit some potholes. I'm going to leave you with this. Adoniram Judson said this. There is no success without sacrifice. If you succeed without sacrifice, it's because someone has suffered before you. If you sacrifice without success, it's because, it's because someone will succeed after or actually, if you sacrifice without success, it's because someone will succeed after. That's right. If you're suffering right now, it might be for somebody else's success. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for the ministry pothole that Barnabas and Paul went through because it got the gospel to me. It actually duplicated the gospel. Lord, I ask that you'd help us to catch your vision of what ministry life is. And Lord, we ask that you do this work in our lives. In Christ's name, amen. Uh, I'm going to leave you with these two verses. John Mark actually was a benefit to Paul later on. Take Mark, John Mark, this same guy, and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And then the things which have happened unto me have fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel. We can see that the gospel was further, furthered. Yes? I would just say, too, when... They reached out. They reached out. And they they connected face to face personally. And that's the best way to, when, when you think something bad's happened to someone, be morally 
or, or just they're in a pothole because of finances or anything you can think of, it's always like Jesus went, you go, yeah. don't hold off, just be there for them, whatever means to them. Hay preguntas? Any questions? All right. Thank you. You're dismissed.